Welcome back to the Adafruit Learning System Raspberry Pi Web IDE video series. In episode 1 we covered how to install and set up the Web IDE on your Raspberry Pi. In episode 2 we covered all the basic features of the Web IDE. In episode 3 we'll go over how to take advantage of the Web IDE Visualizer feature. The Visualizer was created by Philip Goh at pythontutor.com to help teach how Python executes code and to better see what is happening in each step of execution. We found this tool to be extremely useful, so we spent some time tightly integrated it into the Web IDE to better facilitate teaching and learning Python in a really quick and easy way. Before we go into too much detail about why you'd want to use the Visualizer, let's load it up and show you how to get it running. To start, open the Web IDE by navigating to raspberrypi.local in a modern web browser. Once the editor is displayed, open your MyPy Projects folder. For this demonstration, let's create a new folder and title it Visualizer. OK, now that your folder is created, open it by clicking on it. We'll need a new Python file to demonstrate, so let's create one titled firstvisualizer.py. Open that file by clicking on it, and then copy and paste any script you'd like. For this example, I have one already prepared. Save the script you've just copied, and once it has saved, click the Visualizer link in the Editor Action toolbar. The Visualizer will take as long to load as your script takes to execute. OK, it looks like the Visualizer has completed running our program and is ready for us to step through it. The first thing you might have noticed is that the Editor Action bar has changed with first, back, forward, and last, as well as what step we're on in our program. Another thing you can see is that the editor has been replaced with the static view of our program. In the Visualizer, it is not possible to edit your changes and then rerun the Visualizer. You'll need to click the Back to Editor button in the Editor Action toolbar to edit your files. Also at the bottom of the screen is the Program Output. The Visualizer is quite easy to use and understand. The first thing we can do is click the Forward button. This will cause the Visualizer to display the second step of our program's execution stack. You can see that in this case, all it did was import the sleep function and save it as a global variable. Let's click Forward a few more times. Now you can see that we have another new global variable titled X. X is a list and has the values 1, 2, and 3. The great part about this is that you can now visually see how variables are assigned to each other and how they are stored in memory. At this point, we also have a print statement that has appeared in the Program Output section. If we click a few more times, we can see how when we assign a variable to an existing one, in this case X being assigned to Y, Python didn't create a new list specifically for Y, but just set it to the same list. If we modify either X or Y at this point, we could see how it would change both variables' values. Being able to see what's happening to your program visually in each line of your program's source code is a pretty useful tool for someone learning or teaching Python. It's pretty interesting just loading up various examples of source code to see how the frames and objects look as the program executes. You can take a programming concept from a book you're reading and plug it into the visualizer to better understand how and why that concept works as it does. This video has just scratched the surface of what the visualizer can do. Next time you fire up the web IDE, give it a try and see if you can find interesting ways to optimize or better understand your code. In the coming weeks, we'll be releasing videos that will cover more of the advanced features such as the step debugger and the scheduler, so be sure to subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Thanks for watching.